Hey there, this is Akshit Madan and welcome back to a new video. And in this video, we are going to talk about why Node.js is suitable for you, whether you are a beginner or you are a professional working in a team. And now you have to make a decision, should you use Node.js for this particular feature or not? Or let's say you're a beginner, you are in second year or you're in third year and your seniors are now telling you to focus on your technical skills. Uh, to learn front end, to learn back end, and they are suggesting you to go ahead with Node.js. And now you have come to your home and decided to do your own research, and then you came across my video, right? So yes, we are going to solve this doubt. I'm going to give you some tips. Uh, more than tips, they will be like uh, reasons why I am suggesting you to go ahead with Node.js. I mean, uh, there are some other frameworks also which can be better than Node.js, but there are certain uh, points that make Node.js suitable for you as a beginner, right? So if we first of all go ahead with a beginner, let's say you're a beginner, right? And you tell me when you want to learn something uh, in college, which all things you're going to keep in mind or which all things you will uh, focus on because you have to invest next one year or two year, maybe your whole uh, initial journey in the tech field uh, on this tech stack, right? So which all things you will be keeping in mind before uh, learning the first tutorial of this Node.js? Stop this video right over here and tell me in the comment section which all points uh, will come across in your mind. Okay, I'll tell you. First of all, you will think, you know, the first thing that you need to think about is are there jobs uh, related to this tech stack or not, or for this tech stack or not. Let's say I'm a Node.js engineer. I know Node.js. Now, can I get a job? This is the first thing that comes in your mind when you are in college, looking for internship, looking for your first job, that, hey, are there any jobs in this tech stack, for this tech stack, right? So this is the first point. So yes, Node.js has multiple jobs. I understand that today, right now, like in this uh, time period, the job market is down, but it's not down for just Node.js. It is down for all the tech stacks. When the market will improve, Node.js has a lot of scope. So Node.js jobs are not going anywhere in the near future. So jobs are there, right? Next thing that comes to your mind is what is the scope, right? You will think about the scope, like what exactly will I become if I learn Node.js? So the good part is if you learn Node.js, you become a front-end engineer and you become a back-end engineer because in front-end tech stacks and in back-end tech stacks, they both use Node.js as a framework, right? Uh, like whether you use React, whether you learn React Native, right? You learn Express or you le like you either learn front-end tech stacks or you learn back-end tech stacks. You can use Node.js with them. So you can call yourself after, you know, adding some or uh, some other tech stacks in your portfolio, you can call yourself as a front end engineer also and a back end engineer also. So there is a lot of scope, right? Next thing that comes to your mind is, can you guess? Simplicity. Simplicity. That is it simple because you know, you are just in second year or third year and the first tech stack that you want to choose, you don't want to choose a very hi-fi, very complex one. Otherwise, you may lose the interest in the tech, right? So you want to choose a simple framework. So Node.js is super simple. It uses JavaScript, it uses OOP concepts, and uh, it is super simple, right? A lot of documentation is there, uh, right? So uh, tutorials are there, it is simple. So I can guarantee you Node.js is a simple framework to learn as compared to other frameworks because in Python, there is a lot of abstraction, right? You don't understand what exactly is happening on the screen. There are a lot of packages, a lot of libraries, but in Node.js, it's not very abstracted form of uh, abstracted framework. Plus it is not a very low level framework, right? Like in Golang or in Rust, right? You have to deal with a lot of low level uh, complexity and uh, concepts. But in Node.js, not, not a lot of abstraction and not a lot of uh, low level complexities. So it's a simple framework. Next thing, next thing that comes to your mind or you keep in mind is the uh, community. Whether Node.js has a bigger community or not. So Node.js uses JavaScript and we all know that half of the stack overflow is JavaScript. So we can say that Node.js or JavaScript has the largest community, uh, documentation, tutorials, lot of stuff is there from where you can learn Node.js. So this is again, not a problem for you. 
So as a beginner, Node.js looks a good framework for you to go ahead with as your first backend framework or if you are learning Node.js for entering into frontend. So both of, for both of them, Node.js is a safer choice for you as a beginner. Coming to the professional. So here you have to keep in mind some of the technicalities of Node.js, uh, right? So first thing that uh, you will see is uh, whether Node.js can handle concurrent requests or not. Because if you see Golang, Golang handles it very uh, perfectly. But you are seeing that in your team, you have a lot of JavaScript developers and you don't want to hire uh, another set of engineers for Golang and maintaining a backend feature or a backend framework or backend service, right? So now you will think that whether Node.js can also handle concurrency or Node.js can also handle continuous request at the same time or not. So yes, Node.js can handle concurrent request. So concurrency is there. So Node.js is, is an event driven architecture. It follows an event driven architecture and there is no blocking, right? So if a lot of requests are coming at the same time to your Node.js service, it will not fail, right? Yes, Node.js is a single threaded framework. That means it's not a multi-threaded framework. There are not of, uh, there are not multiple threads uh, working behind the Node.js. There is only single thread, but still uh, that actually makes it good for input output bound request, right? So uh, certain use cases that I've written over here are like um, file systems, right? Then it is good for database operations, database queries. So concurrency is a feature of Node.js, right? So that is good. Next thing that comes is scalability, whether Node.js instance is scalable or not. So scalability. So these are not the, not just the features for Node.js. Yes, Python and Golang are also having the Spring Boot are also having these features. I'm not saying that only Node.js has these features, but if your team already has a JavaScript uh, expertise and now you have to make a trade-off uh, between other uh, frameworks and other uh, like frameworks available in the market and then you are you have to report to a manager hey node.js we can use or not then yes you can present these points that yes node.js is also a good choice right so yes node.js is also scalable you can either horizontally scale node.js instance or you can uh, increase the cpu power that will vertically scale node.js and uh, uh, if you are uh, dockerizing your node.js instance that is also possible node.js works seamlessly with uh, docker kubernetes node.js Image is available on Docker Hub. So yes, scalability is not an issue in Node.js, right? Next thing that comes is uh, the Node Package Manager. So a lot of libraries, uh, I would say NPM, that actually goes to the, this is a point that goes to the community itself. Node.js community is too large that Node.js Package Manager, that is NPM, or if you take Yarn, a lot of libraries and packages are available on these hubs and you can directly clone or not clone, but you can directly pull these images or pull these libraries directly uh, use them in your Node.js project. So NPM is also a good factor that makes Node.js a uh, good choice because in Golang, uh, it's quite tough. Like you have to go and search for the repository if it is available or not for this package. Then you have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, pull that repository and uh, do some stuff. I'm not a Go.js uh, Golang developer, but uh, Node.js compared to Golang is a simpler choice in terms of package management, right? So NPM. Next thing that can be a factor for you, if you are building a real-time application, which needs real-time collaboration between client and server, then you will search for whether Node.js uh, allows real-time bi-directional low latency support or not. So yes, Node.js supports WebSockets that will allow your application to have bi-directional that means client can also send some data to server and server can also send some data to client, right? Bi-directional, low latency. So we all know low, uh, like web, so web sockets offers low latency support. So real time, low latency, bi-directional support you can expect in Node.js using web socket. So web sockets are supported in Node.js. That means you can build real time collaborative applications like WhatsApp, like chat applications, like Figma, like Google Docs using Node.js as your backend framework, right? So this is also one factor that you will consider. Next point that you can think of is microservices, whether Node.js offers microservices or not. And when we are talking about microservices, you will definitely think about whether Node.js is lightweight or not. So yes, Node.js is lightweight. It is less CPU intensive. That means it is not going to consume a lot of CPU power also. So yes, Node.js becomes a good choice uh, if you are planning to build microservices 
uh, for your use case, right? With microservices, Node.js can also act as a proxy server. That will make it suitable for working with third-party services, multiple services working at the same time, right? So yes, all of these features contribute to Node.js being a good choice for uh, uh, choosing it as a backend framework or as a runtime, right? So before we see off each other, I would like you to follow me on LinkedIn and check me out on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till the next video, keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.